Howdy, howdy. How y'all doing today? I, bigger? Yeah, I was about to do that, thank you. So, today we're talking about some interesting things. Suspense and the key powering it, streaming. Before I get started, who here has played with React Suspense? Put your hands up and keep them up for a sec. Who has used it for something other than client-side stuff, so pulling in data from a server? Mostly, most of the hands have stayed up. Separate question, who feels like they understand HTTP streaming of HTML? Your hand up if you feel like you understand it. Less people than are using suspense. Very interesting, this will be fun. So, I don't really have a simple demo for how HTTP streaming works, but the TLDR is instead of the server sending the whole HTML page at once, it sends it down effectively line by line as far as it can go, and once the browser has enough data, it will then render what it has, waiting for the rest. So if I show this really quick, I just put a slow component on this page that will have, it'll take about 10 seconds to load, but when we're doing that, we can look at this network request. Well, we can't, because right now, the whole page is loading. Nothing is streaming, it's waiting until the page is generated, and that's why we have the little loading indicator here. And if we look at the request we've got here, the whole HTML is here. But if I was to wrap this with suspense, now it can respond way sooner. I have to import suspense. Now we'll get a response immediately, but what's interesting is the HTML file isn't closed. It didn't actually finish the end of the HTML file. Who knew that you could render HTML in the browser before you had a closing tag? Decent number of people, but not even a third. So yeah, this was a mind-blowing moment for me, and that's when I realized I, I need to understand how this actually works, because it's crazy that the browser is capable of just rendering an incomplete page. And this kind of makes sense. If you think about it, it's like we render this component, we don't close, and then we render this one when it's ready. But what if I flip things around a little bit? What if instead this was below? I could do some CSS hack to move the suspended component after. I could rewrite all the HTML. There's a lot of things you could theoretically do, but I can no longer just send the HTML when it's ready because it's not in the right order. The term for this is out of order streaming, where the thing being streamed in later doesn't come directly after in the HTML. This is a complex issue that has bothered all of us streaming nerds for a while because our page isn't slow depending on how far down it goes. It's not like two page scrolls down, it's slower than it was at the top. Usually you have some things that could be done immediately, like the start of your page or the, like the tags you load and the head tag that are for your CSS and things like that. And ideally, those can start loading immediately and the rest of your data can come in and the rest of your UI can come in when it's ready. We have solved this problem by having a static, basically empty HTML page that loads immediately, downloads a bunch of JavaScript, downloads a bunch of other assets, goes and fetches from an API to get the JSON, bring that down, read that in the JavaScript code, generate HTML, figure out where in the page it goes, and then render it in there. That's like way too many steps. When you stream using the new React primitives, it's way, way simpler. So I'm gonna show how this works. Before I cut off the load, when we still had open tag. But I'm gonna wait a little longer this time because I want you guys to see what it sends afterwards. Now we have this weird div here that is hidden. So this isn't being shown in the browser. It has ID S colon zero. What's that? Well, if we scroll down here, we get some code that I'm sure all of us are very excited to read. So excited that I actually asked Claude earlier for help explaining it, and it did not help. So I will TLDR it. What this code does is it finds a spot in the page that contains the template, which is the initial state that you have with the suspending component, and then hot swaps it, and does that swap right here where it calls RC with these two different tags. If I go back to my editor and take this HTML it dumped, we can scroll up here and see this weird template string. We have this weird comment syntax. We have template IDs B0. 
and our loading state. When the HTML is ready, it gets loaded in with this hidden tag and this ID, and immediately after, in the same chunk load, in the same thing coming down from the server, you also get the script tag that the first time will include the JavaScript function that it needs in order to do the swap, and then the simple line, the RC, B0, S0, which is what's actually doing the swap. So if we took this and ran it on a page with three here instead, probably make sure I actually have this open so we can get the info from the network tab, we'll have nothing here, but then once they all load in, we load the script tag once, and then the additional script tags are just one line scripts that just do the hot swap. Really efficient, surprisingly powerful. This lets you have suspense anywhere in the page and have the component just load in in the right place. But there is so much fun complexity we can break into here. Like if we were to quickly change the code to see how some parts can come in in different orders or faster or slower, like if we change slow component to have a prop, we'll give it a multiplier number. We'll change this to 1,000 times props mult. Thank you, cursor. Very convenient. <laughs> now if we do this, one will come in immediately, then two seconds, then three seconds. But out of order isn't just out of order for where they are in the DOM. It can also be out of order for which components resolve when. So what if instead of one, two, three, it was four, one, or four, ten, two. A lot of the earlier implementations of streaming would assume that it could at least know which request will come back first. But with React and the new server runtime stuff, it can actually determine if it has responded with an additional swapped chunk or not, so it knows whether or not SSM this piece here. So this sent on B2 instead this time. And then the rest came in much simpler later. We can have even more fun though. I wanna break it. So this time, I'm gonna trick it, and we're gonna send some of the HTML to the wrong place. So I have my fake loading state here. And for some reason, this dollar sign appeared. If you're curious about that, so am I, let me know why. <laughs> the actual reason is part of that code I was showing earlier with the hot swapping has a lot of weird template hacking it's doing, and part of it is it's temporarily swapping the data in an element to a dollar sign to know if it's parsed it or not, and it breaks because there's now two places it's trying to swap. So this is the fun playing around with it part, but like, how is this practical? Well, first off, you can show the user content immediately instead of before where we were on the page and we just have this loading state on top and nothing, we can have the loading state and actual content. This unlocks you to own your loading states. If I've learned anything from the many apps I've built, be it server rendered ones or client rendered ones, the things users say are the fastest are not the things that are generated on the server the quickest. They are the ones that show the user a response the fastest. When you click a button, it doesn't matter if the next thing you see is a loading screen as long as you see something as soon as you click. And the little loading bar on the top of your Chrome instance is not, it doesn't count. Users will not perceive a loading bar at the top of the browser as an immediate response. They might click the button a whole bunch of times trying to figure out why it's not responding. So if you can build your applications in a way where you can get a response to the user as soon as they interact and then let the slow parts come in later, it feels way faster. And that's why we ended up so deep in the single page app hole that we were in. Because if you show them an empty HTML template and then you load everything in later, it feels fast, even if your computer's doing way more work and it takes way longer to actually finish the page load. This is kind of a best of all worlds, where instead of having one HTML template that serves all of your pages, you can have a dynamic one. You can even cache that first response, the thing that I copy-pasted into my editor here before the script tag came in. You can cache that part with a KV or a CDN, and then when the user goes to the page, give them that part immediately wait for your cold starts to hit or for your code to spin up or for the database connection to be made, start generating the responses and sending them when they're ready, and now the user still gets that immediate response when they click on something, and don't have to wait for the back and forth waterfall round trips for the rest of the data to come in. You skip all of the steps I described earlier, getting incredible DX around 
wrapping any slow thing with a suspense tag and it just works. And a way simpler rendering mo model that makes everything you build simpler and also faster. <laughs> I was blown away when I realized how this works, but realistically speaking, you don't have to. As I showed earlier, most of the people here who have played with suspense have no idea what HTML streaming was, or you didn't before. It's an implementation detail that we spent a decade figuring out how to do right, and now you don't have to know a thing about it. You just wrap something in suspense, and you can now generate a static asset. You can respond faster. You can defer these pieces until they're ready to load. And my favorite thing is you can load your CSS before your server spins up. You would be amazed how much worse websites feel when you server render them. You're waiting on a blank white page for the loading bar to clear, and it finally loads in your HTML. Then and only then, you've waterfalled your CSS. So your options were server render the whole page, and then once it loads, the CSS, the fonts, and all those other things can come in then, or you have the static page, the HTML, that will immediately load JS, and then waterfalls all the data in the actual rendering. This is the first time, as far as I know, with modern software design, that we have no waterfalls in our happy path. You load the HTML, and then you load the parts that are dynamic, slow, unique, whatever else. It's such a cool pattern, and I'm really excited to see what people end up doing with it long term. I know it's changed how I build, and I'm curious how y'all feel about it long term as well. Thank you all so much. I'll be around after if you have any questions about it. Good.